November 7 was an important day in the life of every Soviet citizen. Uh, on November 7, we hated communism the most. The thing is that November 7 was an anniversary of the Great October Revolution, the same revolution that killed about 50 million of Russian citizens, including a couple of my relatives. Uh, you see, 50 million people were not happy with the new regime. They were not ready to share their wealth with the new regime. And uh, as our leaders told us, uh, they were thrown under the bus of the progress. Uh, in their words, they were saying, uh, when you cut wood, the uh, rakes will fly. In America, you say something very similar. Uh, if you make omelette, you will have to break uh, eggs, and Soviet socialists, uh, they broke eggs by millions. The Soviets were just a notch uh, behind Germans, uh, whose uh, Socialist Workers' Party, led by Adolf Hitler, uh, killed about 40 million of, of people, and uh, behind the great Mao, the great uh, chairman Mao, uh, whose Red Guards uh, killed about 70 million of Chinese. So on this important day, November 7, I took my crew to downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I wanted to interview people uh, who call themselves Occupy LA or 99% I was repeatedly receiving calls from my Russian, Ukrainian and Georgian friends who were asking me the same question, are you out of your mind over there? So in order to find out are we out of our minds here in the United States of America, we landed in the middle of the downtown LA. We were immediately approached by two men uh, looking sharp with no visible signs of spending a night in a tent. One held a folder with papers and another had a briefcase in his hands and a smartphone that he periodically checked. The one with the uh, briefcase uh, asked us very politely who we are and what we are doing here and we explained to him that we uh, came here to report, uh, to, to make uh, a video report to our friends in Russia, specifically in St. Petersburg. Uh, after this polite explanation, uh, they offered to interview them and we politely agreed. You can tell to your Russian viewers that this is a repeat of the Great October Revolution, he told me. Uh, he thought I would be very happy to hear that. I wasn't. The first question I asked both uh, was why you are here? What brought you? to occupy Los Angeles. What I think, I, the reason why I'm here is that I'm a father, and uh, I want to see uh, my child grow up in a world that doesn't have the levels of injustice we have now. What we have right now is such deep wealth inequality. We interviewed several other people as well and asked everyone the same question. Why you are here? We want our money back. exception of uh, Mario, everything else was either just funny or I would say an anti-socialist and anti-Obama agenda. 
uh, mixture of Ron Paul demands to close Federal Reserve and legalize drugs, Tea Party cry for smaller government and accountability, Newt Gingrich uh, wants to close several departments in the government, and the rest of the Republican field uh, wants to radically cut, radically cut expenses and uh, you know stop financing illegal immigration, uh, stop by bailouts, uh, and stop stop financing the life of their children and grandchildren. So, who was right? Is Occupy an American version of the bloody Russian Revolution? Or, uh, as, as Marco said, Mario said, or is it the other side of the Tea Party right now expressed by younger generation uh, and uh, who targeted by mistake uh, Wall Street instead of the White House? But here comes Stephen. So what you have to realize is this collective intelligence experiment is only a phase one staging so that we can all meet each other, take down the first target, which is Wall Street. After that, we realize our power and it's communists, collectives, and co-ops. This is more in tune with Mario. Well, I was uh, here from day one, October 1st, and it was part of the original planning for the occupation. So Mario knows what he's talking about. He is one of those that planned and organized the occupation. Let's ask him and others what they would consider a victory. What supposed to happen in order for them to say, it is done, now we can go home. I want to restore democracy now. It's not time to leave until we get our money back. If you're confused, Stephen will explain in a moment. You give Bank of America your money to hold it and you want to spend. When you come back with 10 of your buddies and say you want to close this account, we Apparently there is a confusion among occupiers. Some of them think that banks owe them $750 billion, the same money that the US government borrowed from Chinese and the White House gave to their bodies at, at the Wall Street. Some others uh, think that the banks do not want to give back the cash that uh, members of the Occupy movement deposited there. Uh, I attempted to clarify the issue. They will not allow you to take your own money? They will close the bank and they will let you go. Okay, that's, that's an interesting experience. Okay, if you will uh, close down several banks and you will, will succeed... We have it with you. For example, you close down two, three, four banks, uh, Wells Fargo, City, Bank of America comes to mind, right? Uh, although they have several trillions of dollars, I believe, together. But let's say you close down several banks. Uh, how businesses here will be conducted in America? They'll be still conducted by the internet because everyone knows if the government turns off the internet, you turn off the government. Do you disagree with the title? Looks like they're all libertarians and watch Fox Cable you know, fair and balance on a daily basis. Um, well, my Android phone, my friend was helping me charge it overnight and the security tent, and I guess when the security was closed, it was in the tent and somebody went in the tent and took the phone. And also I found out that it's for awareness and things and my son's got Crohn's disease. Crohn's is purple for me, so I found out I could spread my awareness too. Okay, here's the list. Restore democracy in America. Probably a worse goal. Uh, return bank deposits. Also an interesting goal, a bit strange. And to be fair to Carl, please do not hang out, hand out any more stimulus packages. Reevaluate entitlement programs and reduce them, but encourage uh, private donations and charity. Return all goods stolen in the Occupy camps, please do, and be aware of the Crohn's disease. Worthy program. I wonder what party will run on those principles. It is definitely make more sense than most of the crap that politicians today, you know, run on. But let's not forget Mario, the community organizer. Under what conditions he would tell uh, his friends there is no more free goods, free food, and you should leave. When it is enough, you know, that's, we're building towards that. We're building towards that. We're not there yet. Do I see sun on the horizon? Of course I do. I just couldn't tell you uh, 
where that is right now because it would be unfair and outside the democratic process we set up for me to say this is the way it needs to be because um, my voice is no more important than anyone else's voice. Did you understand the answer? Because I sure didn't. Uh, I think he said that he has no idea, or maybe, maybe he said that he doesn't want to share with the outsiders. One day we might learn what the community organizers really wanted, or who is behind, who is the mastermind behind the whole movement, but meantime it remains mystery to me. Obviously, those poor people who came for fun uh, to play loud instrument, to smoke a little pot, steal smartphones, laptops from more fortunate occupiers, or maybe have a little extra sex near the city hall, enjoy California sun, or because they're just homeless. But those guys do not have an agenda. They have no idea what they're doing here and why they're here and when they will be, you know, told to leave and, and what was the re what would be the reason for their leaving. But every evening at 7.30 p.m. someone is bringing them together and shaping them uh, to make them, what, aware of the environment, politically savvy, just to exchange jokes, maybe make them real revolutionaries, like it was done with Hitler Jugend in Germany, Komsomol in Russia, uh, Hun Weibin, uh, Red Guard in China. Something to think about, right? Every year, between half a million uh, to a million people from around the world are applying for visas to move permanently to the United States of America. About the same amount crawls under fences, jump over fences, uh, you know, close themselves in metal containers coming from China or in gas tanks of trucks and trailers. Uh, coming from Mexico to move to live in this country. Looks like no one wants to go back or emigrate from America. And the Occupy community organizers want to change this blessed country into what? The Soviet Union? The United Socialist States of America? Another Greece? Uh, do you know any country that, in your opinion, uh, people live better than in, in the United States? So you do, you're talking about freedom. Right? freedom. You, you're free to do things. If you want, you're free to fail, you're free to succeed. What it, how it is different from what is going on here in Native of America today, because you guys are envy of the world. There is no country in the world that succeeded in doing that. So what you guys are doing here now, I don't understand. So what's the number one issue I'm trying to, to understand? Well, I think the number one issue is the oppression and the sense of unfairness. I think I now know the main reason why people occupy Los Angeles, Wall Street and all other cities in the United States of America. The main reason why they sleep on the ground, eat junk and ready to listen to the crap that the community organizers feed them. I know what unites them. It is the same thing that unites billions of people around the globe in their hate to the United States of America. And at the same time, they dream about coming here and living here. It is really very simple. Listen carefully. The secret of their hate and occupation is in one single word. They are dying from E N V Y. Read my lips. N V. Reporting from Los Angeles, California, land of rich and lazy, Leon Weinstein.